How to build a simple countdown timer with Flutter, which you can start, pause and also resume. If you're new here, subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch this video till the end. Let's get started from scratch. First of all, we want to build this button and secondly, the timer. Therefore, I go to the scaffold body property and here inside I create then a method to build our button. And inside of this method, we create a new button widget with a text and also an unclicked handler so that we can later click on this button. And now we want to create this button widget here together. Therefore, we create here simply an elevated button and here inside you can then put first of all the text inside that we got over our constructor. And secondly, we also want to implement the onPressed handler so that we can later click on this button and inside of it we want to put then our void callback, our onClicked handler. And with this, we make sure that we can handle later the clicks outside of this widget. So let's go here back to the main file. And now I can hot reload and we have here a simple button. All right, let's go back to the button widget. And here inside of this elevated button, I also want to set then some padding so that we have more space around our text. And secondly, we also want to change the background color of our button. So instead of blue, we want to choose another one and also the foreground color, which is right now here, this white text. And both of these, the color and the background color, I also define then within the constructor. And now if I hot reload, this button has here by default a black background color and also a foreground color of white. And now we want to click on this button to start our timer. Therefore, we want to create a timer on top of our button. Simply go back to your main file and here I also want to set then first of all a different color for our button. And secondly, we go to the build buttons method and here around we wrap then a column widget so that we can display multiple widgets under each other. And on top of our button, we want to display then simply here another method where we display then our text inside. And I also define here then the seconds. And these seconds are later displayed as our timer. And since we want to update these seconds later, we define them here within our state. And initially we set then the seconds to the max seconds of 60 seconds. And now if I hot reload, you see that the 60 seconds are displayed on top of our button. Let's also improve the style of our text. Therefore, I add here a text style and here I increase then the font size. And this looks already much better then. And now if we click on this button, then we want to start our timer. To achieve this, we simply go to our button widget, which is here the start timer button on the right side. And every time if we then click on this button, then we want to call here a method start timer. Let's now implement this method start timer and therefore we want to create here within our state a new timer object. And within our start timer method, we want to initialize our timer object. And here you can then define that our timer should update every second. And secondly, we can create here a callback which is executed then every second. And inside of this callback, we can then simply decrement our seconds by one. So every single second we want to decrement then our seconds counter. And to make this work, you also need to wrap here the set state around so that your UI gets updated. And now we can start our countdown timer by clicking on this button. During the countdown, we want to include here two buttons, the pause button and the cancel button. And by the way, if you wonder how to create this linear background, I will link a video in the description how you can create this background screen. All right, let's start by implementing the pause button. Therefore, we go here inside of the build buttons method where we display already our start timer button. And here we want to determine then if our timer is currently active and running. And therefore, we simply call here on our timer object, which we have here stored in our state. This is active. And secondly, we also need to make sure that our timer is not null. And in case it is null, then we return here false. And now we can use this is running flag to create then here a second button, which is our pause button. So we can try it out. So I click on the start timer button and you see directly here then the pause button. And next we also want to click on this pause button to stop again our timer. 
Therefore, we want to go inside of the onclick handler of our pause button and here we want to call a message stop timer. And inside of this method, we want to call then on our timer the cancel method. And now we can try it out. So if I click on the pause button, then you see that our timer is pausing. And like you see, we have also this issue that our timer can go below zero. Before we fix this issue, let's also look again here at the statement. Here we cancel our timer, so we basically cancel exactly this timer. And after the timer is then cancelled, this callback is not executed anymore. And with this, it is also not decrementing the seconds anymore if we have stopped our timer. Now let's fix this issue that our timer is not going below zero seconds and therefore we simply add here a condition and check that our seconds are greater than zero and if this is the case then we can still decrement our seconds. However, if it then reaches zero seconds then we want to stop our timer. And again, if our timer is then stopped then it cancels here the timer and we are not going here anymore inside. Let's also try it out. However, I don't want to wait 60 seconds. Therefore, I change here the duration to milliseconds. And now if I click on the start timer button, you see it is going faster and it stops also at zero seconds. Next, we want to create also a cancel button to cancel our timer during the countdown. Therefore, I go to the build buttons method and here next to our pause widget, we want to display then our other button. Therefore, I wrap it inside of a row so that we can display multiple widgets next to each other. And next to our pause button, we create then also here this cancel button. And if we then click on this button, we want to call our stop timer method. And this is calling then the stop timer method, which we have created before. And next to canceling here our timer, we also want to reset again our timer. So we want to set it again to 60 seconds. And therefore we create within our method a property reset, which we can then later set from the outside. And in case we want to reset our timer, then we want to call here a new method reset timer. And here we set then every time the max seconds, which is in this case 60, again to our seconds and also make sure to call here set state to update your UI. All right, let's also try it out. So I click on the start timer and after zero seconds, it will reset again. And this is maybe not what you want. So we can also go here to the start timer method. And here every time if we call the stop timer method, then we want to not reset the timer. All right, let's try it again out. So I click again on the start timer button and this time it doesn't reset again the timer. However, if I click here on this cancel button, then it is resetting the timer. And this is because our stop timer method is also called if we click on our cancel button. And if we call here then the stop timer method, it will automatically reset also our timer. Next, if we have reached the end of our timer, we want to display then again our start timer button instead of the pause and cancel buttons. Therefore, let's go to the build buttons method and here inside we want to check then if our state is completed. So if our seconds are here zero, then we have completed or you can also add here if the seconds are max seconds, which means if the seconds are 60 seconds, then we are in the completed state. And if the timer is not completed, then we want to also show here the pause and cancel button. However, if it is completed, then we want to show here the start timer button instead. And now if I hot reload, you see that we have here directly the start timer button inside because we have here zero seconds. Let's now also try it out. So we click here on the start timer button. However, this is not working here at zero seconds. So if we go here to the start timer button, then we call here the start timer. And what this method is doing, it is always decrementing the seconds. However, it is not resetting the seconds if we call the start timer. And therefore we also want to add it. So we add here this reset flag and in case it is set, then we want to reset our timer. And now we can try it out. So I click on the start timer button and then you see that it is working again. However, now we have again the issue that the two buttons are displayed at zero seconds and this is because we are not updating here after we call stop timer. So we also need to call here set state and with this it is updated every time. And now I can click on the start timer button and after it reaches then zero, it turns again to the start timer button. 
because the stop timer method is called and also the UI is then updated. Let's again set our timer then to one second. And with this, our timer is again slower. And now we can also implement here this pause functionality. So if we click on this pause button, then we also want to have again a resume button where we can then resume our counter. Therefore, let's go again to our build buttons method. And here, instead of this pause, we want to also have a resume. So if it is running, then we show the pause button. However, if it is not running, then we want to resume again. Let's now also try it out. So I click here on this pause button and you see it is not switching to the resume button. And this is because if we call here the stop timer method, then it is also resetting our timer. And this is not what we want to have if we click on the pause button. Therefore, let's go back to our pause button. And if we call here the stop timer method, then we want to set the reset to false. Let's also try it again out. So we have here again the pause button. And if I click on the pause button, we have here this time the resume button. And now if we click on this resume button, then we want to continue with the countdown. And therefore we check here if our countdown is currently running. And if this is the case, then we want to stop the timer if we click on the pause button. However, if it is not running, then we are in the pause state. And then we want to start again our timer. So let's try it out. I click on resume and then it is resuming. And if I click again on pause, then it is pausing. Next, we want to improve here the design of our countdown timer. So we also want to have here a progress around. Therefore, I go to the build method and here where we display the time, I want to replace it by a new method build timer. And inside of this build timer method, we also put again the build time method inside for displaying our text. However, next to it, we also want to wrap it inside of a stack so that we can display multiple widgets on top of each other. And in our case, we want to display then this circular progress indicator on top of our number. Before we do this, we also want to give here our stack a specific size. So we give it 200 by 200 pixels. And lastly, we can then create here a circular progress indicator. And here we determine then the value. So we simply take our current value, which is for example, 55 seconds, and we divide it by 60 seconds. And this gives us then a percentage, which we can display within our circular progress indicator. And this looks already like this. So we have here a normal progress indicator, which is then also changing. Let's also give it a bigger stroke width. So we put it here to 12 and this looks much better. And next to it, we also want to set then a different color. So we want to set it here to this white color. And lastly, I also can set here then the green background color. And this is then the other part on the left side, which is now moving all the time. All right, and now we have here a cool timer, which we can pause and resume. And if you like, you can also display here this progress indicator from the other side. Therefore, we can simply flip here this animation by subtracting it from one. And now if I click here on the start timer, then you see it is going into the other direction. And lastly, if you like, you can also go to the build time method, which is displaying here the time in the middle. And in case it is then zero the time, then we can also display here other things. For example, here this done icon. And by the way, if you want to get here this whole source code of this application, then you can get it with the first link in the description. And with the second link, you can get access to my Flutter courses, where I teach you how you can become a better and more efficient developer. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel.